going to be a very, very long video, so I'm going to just try and get the introduction out of the way quickly. I imagine most people are just going to skip through the timeline anyway to get to where they want to be, but uh, this is going to be kind of like a two-parter. The first part is going to be key shot rendering. The second part is going to be Autodesk V-Red doing the same thing in Autodesk V-Red. And uh, we're going to be rendering a Formula One car, and it's a game asset provided by the guys from the modding team called ACFL. Now, I'm going to talk more about it as we go through the video. But here's a quick clip of their game asset being driven by me around a set of Corsa in virtual reality. And this thing is absolutely phenomenal. And that really was as fun as it looked. I bought this game mod around two months ago, got in touch with the guys from ACFL about a week ago and asked them if I could borrow their actual native core model, expecting them to say, no, no, we're not giving you that. And they did, and I'm very, very grateful. It is a phenomenal model that they've got, and we're going to put it through Keyshot to see what it comes out like. Now, there's two reasons why I'm doing this video. The first one is that I've learned everything that I know about rendering from watching other people do rendering on YouTube, so I'm putting out my own stuff for that. And secondly, is that I feel still like an amateur with rendering. So I need people who know more about this stuff than me to look at what I'm doing and go, at time point X, Y, Z, you should have done this, that, and the other, and it would have looked better. Try this for a better effect. I need people to sort of give me pointers because uh, this, I've got a lot to learn. Or I've got a lot to learn with rendering, even though I can get some good results. So with that being said, let's jump across into CAD to take a look at what we're dealing with and what we've got to play with. And here we are over in 3D Studio Max looking at the ACFL F2018 car in all its Mercedes AMG glory. They've provided me with the Mercedes car and the Ferrari car, which uh, you've got to you've got to give it to them. Like the detail they've went to to recreate the cars, rather than just knock out one car and put a skin on it. I mean, you can see there the Ferrari car's got the uh, the wing mirrors attached to the halo as it does in real life, and then the Mercedes car does not. It's got the wing mirrors separately mounted. With the fins on the side and the body shape is totally different to the Ferrari. They've done a really good job with this. The attention to detail is outstanding. So uh, as we used the Mercedes car in the game footage in the introduction, I'm going to stick with the Mercedes car and that's the one we'll be rendering. So I need to get this out of 3D Studio Max and into Keyshot and that's where my skills begin to dry up because honestly, mate, I don't know what a single button in 3D Studio Max does. I don't know what any of this is. I don't know if I have to select all the parts, uh, unfreeze them, unhide them. I, I don't know. I don't know what I've got to do to get it out. But uh, we'll go to export and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Let's just run with it. So we've got a number of different export formats. Now, obviously, I've run a few. I've been playing with this over the last couple of weeks, and I've done some exports already, but I still don't know what the format is that I should be using. Logic would suggest FBX, but... I seem to get unreliable results with an FBX output from Studio Max. Sometimes textures are in there, sometimes they're not. I don't know what I'm doing differently when they do and don't go out. So I'm going to stick with 3DS, which doesn't include the textures, unless I'm doing that wrong as well. I don't know. But we'll drop this onto the desktop as the 3DS file. And we'll... Uh, I do... Oh, bloody hell. This is, it, having Keyshot Max and my screen recording software is playing absolute hell with my... Uh, with my computer, there's just the CPU is getting beaten. I've got an 8700K, which is as good as it gets, to be honest, and uh, it's taking an absolute pounding. So I might, uh, it will be slow. This is going to be very slow paced. I'll be waiting on dialogue boxes popping up and whatnot, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Right, so we'll go Mercedes F1, ACFL, drop this onto the desktop. There'll be no textures in here, but uh, it, uh, it exports suspiciously quickly. <laughs> That's the first sort of, hmm, have I done that right? I am not sure. But uh, let's let's get into Keyshot. I'm going to shut down Max just to give the, the PC a break. Because uh, the less it's got open, the better. <laughs> and uh, let's uh, see what we can do. Right, I am recording in 1080p. 
but I'm on a widescreen 21 by 9 monitor, 1440p. So there's there's going to be occasions possibly where sort of right-click menus clip off screen. And uh, there's nothing I can do about that. But uh, And I'm limited for screen real estate. I've done a video on the benefits of ultra-wide monitors, but this is YouTube and it's 1080p. So uh, I've got a very limited window here to work with. It, it sucks. <laughs> ultra-wide is amazing, uh, but 1080p sucks. And uh, let's go to import and see what we've got to play with here. So we'll bring in the 3DS file. Up orientation is Z, even though it's Y here, but the max coordinates were Z. Geometry units, meters. I think the car was modeled in uh, meters being the, the native units in max. So we'll just bring this in and see what happens. So there we go. All right, that looks, uh, that looks pretty crispy, even without any textures on it. It's like, I like that. It looks like one of those models you get to build out of a magazine. Uh, and it's it's looking pretty nice. So now we've got to, we'll put it in performance mode, though, just to give the computer a break, because things are going to take a while. Re Keyshot is 100% rendered on the CPU, and it will use every single bit of CPU resource that it can get its hands on, which means my screen recording software might be laggy. Uh, I'm possibly going to drop frames and it's going to be slow nothing i can do about it at the moment uh, but we'll see how we go right so the units let's take a look right we're in meters so we're, we're working in 7.1 meters now i can set the scene units to millimeters and then go from there but i think i might be all right working in meters i, pr I don't like working in meters but that's uh, it, it is quite a big model so i think i'm going to stick with meters and uh, we'll see how we go from there. All right, there's a few things I need to do just to get the scene. Uh, and d don't forget, right, I, I, I need to reiterate this. I am an absolute amateur. I have absolutely no idea if what I'm doing is the right workflow. I need people to go, no, you should have done You should have done this, that, and the other. So I'm not saying that any of this is the right way. But I do know that I, at the end, I do get a result that I want. So uh, whether I get there the right way or not, it it. So it probably does matter because there'll be better ways of doing it. But we're going to remove the blurred assets. So these are game assets that ACFL create for uh, for when the car is moving in game, and it'll render a blurred texture onto these objects. But because we're we're doing a static render, we don't need these, so we can get rid of those. And you can see now we're going to see the spokes of the alloy wheel, and every other blurred entity has disappeared. And this thing running at the back here is an, a game asset that they render a spark texture on. So when a Formula One car kind of clips the ground, and you see the sparks flying up from the floor plate. Uh, the render that onto uh, that, but we don't need that either, so we can get shot of that. And uh, we're good to go, right? So there's the car, uh, the scene that we're working with. I'm not going to play around with lighting on or anything like that yet, because uh, I'm not interested in the the background until we're uh, until we've done the texturing on the car. So this is the thing that takes the longest time. Fortunately, though, ACFL have provided all the textures for the car. I can pretty much drop a texture onto every single object in the car and just render it out straight away. But there's a bit of work I've needed to do. A bit. It's a bit of an understatement. There's a lot of work I've had to do leading up to here. So this is the texture pack that they've uh, provided me with. So we've got a lot of Photoshop files with accompanying PNG files. I'm not going to use these PNGs. I'm going to use the Photoshop files. But in this texture folder here, we've got all the, the normal and bump maps and uh, tire textures. So I'm going to use these on the car where appropriate. If I can if I can use a native Keyshot material instead of a texture, I'll do that. But for the most part, most Formula 1 cars are, are wrapped in, uh, in you know the stickers and uh, the wings, just pretty much an entire sticker. So I need that I need to use these textures really. There's nothing I can do about that. But fortunately, they're, they're pretty good quality. The only thing that lets the textures down is the bump maps, and uh, I'm going to have to be careful with those because if I just bring that into shot, uh, the bump maps are fine for game assets. But when you zoom in quite close on them, you can see here that they're starting to break up. So when I put these onto the car, uh, the the pixelated nature of the bump map or the normal map is going to show on the car so that the all of these pixelated ripples will show as pixelated dents on the car which does not look great so i'm gonna have to make a decision when i get to it as to whether or not to use these uh and how much of a difference that's going to make or not but some of them are fine i mean like that one there that's that's high enough quality to use so some of them are good some of them are not but uh good enough for a game for a render we'll have to make that call when we come to it so all we really need to do and again I, I don't know if this is normal whether or not a, a renderer 
has to make their own textures most of the time or whether they're given the textures and the models and they just apply them and set the scenes i don't know but uh, it's it's good to have all of these pre-created for you and they've done a really good job they've got a guy dedicated to making the textures and uh, he's done a phenomenal job so let's get cracking with it where to start i normally have to start with the wheels but the wheels are a bit of a nightmare on this car actually i don't know whether that's key shots fault or and I've, don't forget as i'm going through this the textures have been created for the game not for key shot or for a rendering environment so i, I have had to do a lot oh yeah that's why i was going with that the textures were originally provided in dds format which i think is what Assetto Corsa and game engines prefer but Keyshot just did not like the DDS files. They just would not work. So I've had to convert every single DDS file into a PNG. Uh, so that's uh, that's something that took quite a while to do. Okay, all right, let's start with the front wing. All right, th this is going to be pretty simple to get the textures on. So all I really need to do is uh, edit the material graph and start bringing in the textures. So I can either drag and drop them in, which I've had mixed results with with Keyshot. Uh, on uh, on the Ferrari car, which I've put a few images onto Instagram of, uh, I've pre-rendered that already in Keyshot. When I was dragging the the files into here, just dropping them onto the material graph, it was randomly applying the texture to other parts of the model, just dragging it into this totally separate material, which was driving me absolutely nuts. So eventually, I was just adding the textures through the right-click menu. So we'll see how we go dragging them in. I prefer to drag them in because it's quicker. But if it starts to mess around with the background uh, and other textures, we'll, we'll stop doing that. And at least it'll be documented. All right, I'm going to drag that onto Diffuse. And uh, you can see the texture is now on the front wing. Is it right? No, it's not. So we need to change this to uh, a tiled UV. So the textures have been unwrapped from the 3D Studio Max model into uh, a UV mapping. So we should just be able to drop them into Keyshot and then just use the tiled UV style and it'll just drop them in like that and they should map on. Okay, so this is where it's not ideal. I've got carbon fiber on the end of the wing here. I'd rather use the carbon fiber texture in Keyshot because it'll look a lot better, but it's part of the it's part of the, the actual sticker. It's part of the entire image, so I've got kind of got to use it. It would have been great if the modeler had have modeled the carbon bits separately and everything that's a sticker or painted was a separate object, but it's not the case. The wing is one entire object, so uh, it is what it is, and we'll just run with it. So the material type, I think what I'm going to do is change that to paint. Get a better result when it's fully rendered if I set these to paint. Uh, for the main body, I might use a metallic paint. It depends what it comes out like. That's part That's part of the joy of doing this. It's just playing around with different material types to see what it comes out like. So if I switch this over, not on performance mode. So that's what it looks like as just paint. It's already looking pretty good. Like, And change that over to like plastic. You just got like a different shine on it. And when the background goes on, it'll react differently with the background. And then we've got sort of an advanced metallic paint which you can start to see the speckles in there, which obviously with carbon fiber, that's not how it should look. So we're not gonna go with metallic paint on the front wing. So we'll stick with just standard paint. Right, so the bump map, right? This is where things are gonna to start to get a bit interesting. This front plate here, this has a bump map associated with it. So it's uh, it's obviously a riveted on or a screwed on plate and it's currently 100% flat. So it needs to be grooved around here, but the bump map ain't gonna look great, but we'll see what happens. So we need to go into the texture pack and then the wings normal map, drag that into there. And then we'll make that the bump and we'll see what happens. Uh, and this is where I'm gonna start getting some undesired. I, I found when I've been playing with it, I've had to change these quite a lot. Sometimes just like, Clicking off and clicking back onto a setting enables it properly. Look at some really strange. There you go. Look at that. It's no good. That's no good at all. Change that over a normal map though, which is what it is. Yeah, it's not. It's not great. So you can see the start of the bump is here, and there, and there, and that's just the pixelated nature of the normal map. It should just be between there and there. It should be like razor sharp, but it's just not. So if we change that to like five. Now you can see an exaggerated version of what we've got. So, not great. I'm going to stick with it, though. I'm going to make it pretty minimal. We'll stick with just a bump map of one. In fact, two, possibly. Right, we'll see how we'll go with that. Because I need it for the carbon fiber. I need the carbon fiber to be textured. That's way too much. 
That is way too much. I'm going to drop that down for one. And we'll see how we'll go with that. It's still way too much by the looks of it. Carbon fibre just does not look like that. 0.5 and that point one. Oh god, that looks bloody awful. Right, I'll stick with uh, point 0.1. And uh, let's see what it looks like on the outside. 0.5. This is the video. <laughs> the video is going to be like this the whole time. It's just that's what rendering is to me. It's just playing around with different settings, trial and error until you get something that you think looks good. So uh, I'm going to stick with that. Right, so that's the front wing done. And you've seen I've, I've not had to play around with kind of paint finishes and on a normal car where it is a painted finish and there's no decals you do have to use sort of you know you have to use all the textures that are associated to uh, native to key shot to get it looking right but this is just all provided textures which is which is good it just makes my job a little bit more easy not that it's a job i'm getting paid for this this is just fun i'm just doing this for fun and uh i just love it i could do this all day right main body of the car so in fact what i'm going to do is this properly so i'm going to go back to the wing i'm going to change this oh, it's already called wing let's call this front wing I'm not going to call it front wing because the text just shared with the rear wing, so I'm going to call this uh, just wing. And uh, yeah, you can see that's at the back as well, so that's also applied itself to the back uh, using mapping. So I think the way it works is when Studio Max exports the image, it I, I don't think it contains model data in the image, that's not possible, I don't think, but um, it looks in the scene for a material called wings and it'll wrap the image around the same object type as what it was exported off. I think that's a very, very primitive explanation of how it works. I'd love to know more about how it works, but uh, for now, I'm just going to do it. Right, so this is the main body. So I'm going to call this material main body, and then rinse and repeat. So we're going to go back over to the texture pack, and then it's this one, body.pst. And we'll use that as the diffuse, change this over to paint, and then in textures, we're going to use tiled UV and then whack. Oh my God, that looks so good. That is already looking so good. I'm going to change this back to performance mode though, just so it's not caning my uh, screen recording. And then the bump mapping. Ugh, right. Let's, uh, let's see what it does. I've got a feeling this one's not going to be great. So I'm going to zoom in, set that as the camera target. Let's zoom into one of these grooved areas to see what this comes out like. I'm not hopeful. Tiled you. Oh, God, that's awful. Normal map. Uh, yeah, that's not brilliant. That's not brilliant, but... Oh, that looks even awful there, isn't it? It's absolutely awful. I might have to turn off the bump map for the main body, because that there is hideous. Uh, it's just a pixelated pixelated nature of that particular bump map. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm, I can't have that. That's awful. But the main decal's on and that'll do me. Right, so the rest of it. Let's get cracking with the other oh, halos done. Wing mirrors. So the way I'm doing this is uh, I'm looking at the name of the, the texture or the name of the material object that's been brought in a key shot and I'm just lining it up with the name of the texture in the texture pack. So this is Aero. Uh, I don't know what Aero is actually referring to but there's the normal map for it so we'll drag that in and then come up to the main photoshop psd file and we'll drag that in uh, and every time key shot freezes like it did there i'm thinking oh god don't crash because all of the times where i've been experimenting and practicing with this key shot has crashed on me so many times People gave Autodesk stick for their unreliability, but Keyshot, it's got some it's got some bugs in it. It really has got some bugs in it, but uh, on the whole, it's been pretty good. As long as you save it on a regular basis, which I've not done yet. So uh, I'll, uh, I'll do this material, then I'll save it. But yeah, as long as you save it, you're fine. I'll be, oh my god, that's so satisfying when that happens. It's, uh, it's not normal how satisfying that feels, right? And then we'll go to Tiled UV. I don't know where the bumps are. I don't know what the normal map is actually doing here. Where, where, where is it? What is all this? Oh, it's all the end plates. So I have to assume that it's doing its job and it's doing it right. So we're going to change that over to a normal map. And uh, I think I'll just leave it at that. I'm not interested in looking at where the bump is on that. I think it's sharp enough. If I start noticing some weird bumps and ripples and stuff later on, I can always come back and fix it. So let's get this saved. And I'm going to save this off. I'll just drop this on my desktop. As... Uh, 
Merc. A Merc dot bip. There we go. Right. Okay, right, the top camera. Let's get him sorted out. It's uh, going to be pretty repetitive all the way through this, which, again, I don't know if, I, if I'm doing this right or not. I don't know, but I would imagine most rendering artists don't have the... Uh, what's this called? Camera top. Don't have the pleasure of and the convenience of having all of the textures done for them. They may have to do all this themselves. Let's bring the bump up in as well. But... Uh, this does make my job very easy, but obviously once I've uh, I've done all the texturing, I do have to then render it. I've got to set the scene up and do all the lighting, so that is uh, that is a bit of work. So what's this brought this in as? Right, so that's brought this in as a texture out. So we're going to tile that on the UV, and then we're going to make this paint as well. Uh, what does this is metal? What does this look like as metal on the top? Oh, it's way too shiny. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to change that back to... What about plastic? Hmm... Mm. I mean, that is entirely carbon fiber, so that could get away with being plastic uh, with maybe less of a refractive index. The refractive index is the, how much it reflects. Uh, but no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it back to paint. We're gonna, I'll set everything as paint initially, and then uh, we can come back to it. Right, and then the bump map, same again, tiled UV, normal map. And that should give us some bumps and ripples on the carbon fiber. So that's the camera target and move in. Uh, you know, it's not looking. You know, maybe it's a bit too much bump under the yellow. 0 0.2. We are still in performance mode, mind all. Okay, it doesn't, <laughs> I was thinking it'll clear itself up when you go out of it, but no, it's still a bit bumpy under the yellow. But uh, we'll just leave it like that. I'm happy with that for now. Right, so that's that's the top camera. And we've got these side cameras here. So this is uh, race mode. This is when they fully load the car up with all the cameras that you see when uh, when the Formula 1's on. So all these side mounted, top mounted and front mounted cameras. So uh, it's coming here. T-cam. So I don't know what I'm going to I'll leave that as T-cam. I don't really care about giving that one a name. It's only one object. Uh, so has this got its own texture then? T-cam. T-cam. T oh, it does. Yeah, T-cam, right. So this is a PNG. Which I've had to convert from a DDS because for some reason Keyshot just did not like the DDS files. I'm assuming the game does, but Keyshot just didn't. It wasn't seeing the uh, the alpha channel in them. So where are we at? We're up yet. So I'd zoom into here and see how it's going to turn out like. So again, we're going to move that over to uh, tiled UV, and yeah, it's just carbon fiber in it. It's, uh, no drama. Tiled UV for the normal map and uh, it doesn't look like it's done much has it that normal map doesn't look like it's affected that at all T cam bump tiled UV what if I change this over to a boxed texture map no okay there's maybe one of those textures where it's just not wanting to play fine suit yourself I don't yeah this, that's just not doing anything is it do I need it though Seems like the paint. Oh, hang on a minute. Is that now going to affect it? Yeah, okay. Not sure why that made a difference, but whatever, mate. Whatever. Let's knock this down to point 0.2. Hmm. Point 0.5. Right, that's TCAM done. And, uh, right, what's next? What's next? Has that got a texture on it? Uh, yes, that's the aero parts. Right, so this bit down here, I think this is called diffuser. Let's get rid of that so we can see it appear in the scene. Right, so that's the front etage, but I think this uses the diffuser material. Yep. So we're going to call this diffuser with 1D. And I think we've got a Photoshop file for this. Diffuser, diffuser, diffuser. There we go. Right, so we're going to drop him in, whack that onto the diffuse layer, and then into texture and we've got a bump map for this as well. Diffuse a B bump map. Drag on the bump. And then we're gonna change this to be uh, tiled UV bump tiled UV and change it over to well this is I don't know which other parts of the car body this appears on but I'm gonna go with paint for now. This might end up being a bit too shiny. Carbon fiber is kinda shiny though so uh, we'll just have to play around with what that comes out looking like. 
But, uh, yeah. Okay, right. So for the front suspension, um, I'd probably prefer to use a key shot material for this. Something like glossy metal, black glossy metal or something. Uh, like that one there, hard shiny metal for the front suspension. But some of the Formula 1 cars have got decals on the suspension. So we'll start with using the texture for the suspension. And then see what happens. Suspensions. Suspension. Could have just deleted the S, but you know, never mind. And uh, have we got a Photoshop file for this? Yes. So we're going to drag that on. If this just comes out as black, I might just might just use metal. So we'll lock that on as a UV. Oh no, it's actually carbon fiber that. Uh, if I start using the key shot carbon fiber texture now though, it might look a little weird. So I might just stick with that. It's not ideal, but um, I don't really want to mix and match carbon fiber textures too much because that would show up. Uh, has it got a bump? Back in the Mercedes suspensions, bump up, change that over to uh, tiled UV, and then a normal map, and change this over to. It should really be metal like. Ugh. Ugh. Hmm. Uh, we'll leave it as metal though. I'll lower the bump. A little bit, 0.5. Because out of performance mode, that might look better. Mm, not really. All right, I'm gonna leave it as that though. Because it is, it is actually. Oh, it's, not metal, it's carbon fiber. It's, it's, it's not metal. <laughs> it is actually carbon fiber. So we should really change this to something. Uh, let's just put it back to paint. Let's just be consistent. Right. What's this little dude out of here? Front levy. What's this? Suspension chrome, right? I think that's chrome. So I can probably use a key shot metal for that. So let's go into here. Will it be polished? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. That looks nasty. Chrome rough. Uh, let's just do that. Okay. What about the other side? Right, this, that's applied itself to the other side. And uh, what about the rear? So this is the rear diffuser or the gearbox. It's gearbox housing, right? So, boit. I don't know what that means, but it's probably French or something for something. Uh, and let's go to the equivalent Photoshop file for it, and then whack down that. I think we've got a texture for it as well, boit B. So so far, dragging and dropping the textures is behaving, which is uh, tres bueno. And uh, tiled UV. And paint. Ah, oh, it's better. There we go. Right. And then the bump map, same again. Tiled UV, normal map. And then 0 0.2, 0.5. Yeah, that'll do. Right, what's this? This should be transmission, I think. Tube transmission. Right, again, probably something I should do. I'm kind of way down the rabbit hole now with putting textures on. If I start using the key shot materials for stuff like this, it is going to look too odd. So, do we have a transmission? Oh, we had a TCAM PSD file. I don't think I used that, did I? I think I used the... Let's just check what texture I used here. Yeah, camera top. Oh, TCAM was the side, not the top one. Did I use a, a PNG? Yeah, I used a PNG. We'll change that. Use the original Photoshop file. It's probably not too much of a difference, but the Photoshop file, I assume, is a higher resolution. It might not be. Uh, I haven't checked, if I'm honest. But uh, Right. Uh, so for the transmission... We're going to use a texture. I'm going to have to. I'm way too. Like I said before, I'm way too far down the rabbit hole with textures to start changing it now. So we'll go with transmission, which is that. This is just a bunch of tubes. It's probably very bad practice, but it's going to end up in a darkened room on a plinth. So the textures should be fine. Do we have a bitmap 
uh, bump map for transmission. No, we don't. So we're going to stick with that, and that is metal. There we go. Right. That'll do. And this thing here, I don't know what this is. E-chaps. I don't think I've got an E-chaps image. Uh, no, I don't. But it's the exhaust. So I'm going to go... I don't think they're chrome on a Formula 1 car. I think they're like gloss black. So let's go with a hard shiny plastic black. No. Can I type in black metal? Will that find something decent? Metal polished. Yep, I'll do. I'll drag that onto that. Right. It doesn't look very black in this, but we are in performance mode, so that should go black once we start rendering. Right, I think we're good for the wheels now. So this is, or can be, the the hard part. We've still got to do the interior. We've got a seatbelt and a steering wheel with a bunch of images on the steering wheel, on the mirrors as well. So we'll do the mirrors. So I'm going to go with glass. A solid onto there. And uh, that's just the see-through, so I need to edit that and then change the reflective or refractive index. And that should reflect back at what we're seeing. Yeah, you can see the rear of the car, so that's now behaving like a mirror. Good, good. All right. Yeah, I think I'll go to the wheels now before I do the interior. And this is going to be just more of the same. Uh, apologies, I can't make this any more exciting than it is, but uh, it's just uh, the necessary part of getting everything rendered up and uh, textured up. So we're going to start with the front right. Uh, let's jump into the material graph here. Now, the tyres have given us a bit of jip since I started playing around with this. I have had to edit the textures quite somewhat uh, to get them to apply to the car and key shot. But uh, let's see what they come out like. So where's my tyre? Right, so I've, I did split them up into two, tyre left and tyre right, but I don't think I need to do that. I think I can possibly use this one, providing that I keep the material the same because it shares the material across both tyres. So that's the left texture, that's the right texture. I do believe if, uh, if I stick this on to... I don't know why it does that. I think I might have to change this to a UV texture map. Yeah, I don't know what... I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that's uh, a thing. But uh, it has to be a, a textured map rather than tiled UV, but uh, we'll just let it get on with it. So for the bump, uh, let's see what that comes out like. Uh, I'm going to use that one there. Uh, this could be hit or miss. Uh, bump, same again. Normal map. Let's zoom in to see what it does. Turn off performance mode. Hmm. I'm not really seeing any results there at all, if I'm honest. Doesn't look like it's doing a th thing. Tire B, PNG. Hmm. Box. Why, why did changing the bump map change the diffuse? That this is where oh, unless it's because it's synced, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure why that's not actually affecting the texture. Take a look at the texture. Well, okay, let's try a different. One. Let's try tire NM. Let's see if this one makes any difference. Let's get rid of that one. Let's use this one instead. Uh, UV normal map. No, you can see that's starting to apply itself across there, so that's not working. Nope. Okay, so I think I can probably get away with not having a bump map on the side of the tyre. I don't think the bump is... It, they are pretty smooth tyres anyway. There are very slight ridges here. But I don't think they're going to be required. Let's see how far we can get without them. Uh, I can't be bothered to mess around with the texture too much just for the sake of these tiny little ridges. If it was a daylight scene that I was going for, then possibly. But for a, a night scene, no, nah, I think we'll just... I'll just let it go. Right, so the actual tread. We've got different tread for the front and back. So Pirelli tread, PNG. Let's see what happens with this one. <coughs> just drop this out of the diffuse. 
Let's see what happens with a tile UV. Now, why why does it do that? <laughs> What's that about? Uh, UV. Okay. I think that's what the tread should look like. I'm trying to visualize what it looks like in game. I think that's probably okay. Does it need to repeat? Yes, it does need to repeat. And do we need a bump? Uh, it comes with a bump, but I'm just thinking, shall I use the native rubber bump inside key shot, or shall I use... Let's just see what happens with this one. We'll try this one first. Uh, and that should be a normal map. So you can see it's given us some indentations here. All right, we'll stick with this one. Um, I think on the Ferrari image that I used on uh, Instagram, I used the native key shot rubber bump rather than that one, but that one's fine. Okay, so that's the front tyres done. Let's go back to the rear. The rear tyres are wider, so there's a different image for those, uh, but we're using the same side profile for the rears, so let's get that cranked on. Diffuse, so going for a UV that's the one. And that should apply over to the left as well. Oh, camera, where are you going? Yep, so that's applied over to the left tire as well. And then for the tread, oh, sorry, that's an advanced, right? So I need to play with the material type as well because the tire sidewall is quite glossy. Uh, and I don't want it to be too matte, but we'll come back to that. Right, so we'll then at the material for the tread. So the tread rear, rear tire tread under the diffuse and then UV there we go do the same with the bump I should have a rear bump as well I do feel a little bit like I am a fraud <laughs> because this is uh, I'm like almost stealing the glory from everybody else's hard work like the guy who did the modeling the guy who did the texturing I'm just using what they've created and uh, I didn't make a key shot. It's like I'm, I'm pulling all this together and making it look phenomenal. But uh, I didn't actually create any of the assets. It does feel a bit like uh, a fraud, but never mind. It looks good at the end of it all, and that's all that counts. Uh, credit to the ACFL team, obviously, for the model and the textures. That's all their work, and wow, what work they've done. Uh, the windscreen, yeah, Hamilton. This is Hamilton's car, obviously, the Mercedes car. It should be f number 44, actually, Hamilton. 77, unless I've used the texture from Valtteri Bottas, I don't know. But uh, it goes with this sort of jaggedy windscreen, which when I first played it in a set of Corsa, I thought that's it looked like a defect. But no, his actual car has this weird glass. I think it's to do with some, it's like deflects the air up into his helmet, I think. Something to do with the aerodynamics rather than having like a flat windscreen. But um, we'll go with glass, solid. Let's just crank that under there. That should be fine. I mean, it's, it's just glass in it. Doesn't need to be too fancy. That's still a little do. I don't need to tint it or not like that. And then for the wheels, right, the wheels. Uh, you do get textures for the wheels, but I'm not going to use them because, where, where are they, extra rim. Yeah, this is what we get. And uh, it's replacing what should be a metal wheel with, like a, sounds, I was going to say cartoony. But it's just a picture, isn't it? It's a picture of a wheel, which that's what it needs in game, because the game engine doesn't have key shot materials. So uh, I'm not going to use those. But what I'm going to mm, think is I'm going to miss out on the blue accent around the rim, uh, which that would have been nice if the modeler had have separated the the actual rim here as a separate object. But uh, yeah, the, the Mercedes car does have this blue rim. What if I can make it a multi-material? And this is where I need to try and use some skills with Keyshot. And I'm not not really great at this. So let's create a multi-material and then edit the graph. I, I, I really don't know what I'm doing here. So let's just improvise. Uh, diffuse. So, oh, I shut the bloody window down, didn't I? Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Uh, textures. I find myself doing that a lot when I've been playing with this. I'm shutting down Windows Explorer and then like five seconds later I need to go back and it's this folder nestled right the way down into one of my external hard drives. Uh, external rim, grab that, drag it on there. Right, so I'll, I'll set it up as the texture 
should be in game and then we'll see if we can mix it with a metal so I can retain some of the blue but then have the actual metal come through that's what I'm trying to go for I'm not sure how to do it but we'll see how far we'll get so that's what it looks like I mean it doesn't look terrible but it's not metal when it renders that won't look metal so how do I add a new material in here? New, new plastic, I don't want new plastic, material type metal. Uh, so that's the metal color. How do I do this? <laughs> this is where I'm complete amateur shining through. Uh, I don't want to add a new plastic though. I want to add a new metal. Duplicate material, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's, can I make that metal then? Hmm. Do I reorder these or something? I mean, I don't know. I don't really know what's happening right now. Uh, metal type. Has that made it look metal though? I actually might get away with that, you know. I don't know what I've. I really don't know what I've done there. I don't know if I've done anything, but I might get away with that. Alright, we'll see what that looks like when it finishes. And that's it done it at all four wheels, isn't it? Sweet! Right, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Because uh, I've accidentally made that look okay. It might look terrible. I'm just talking about a performance mode. It might look terrible when it comes to uh, the final render. But uh, I was, I'd have preferred like an anodized, almost metallic y kind of finish to it, just so the metal pops out of the wheel rather than it be flat. Because uh, that's where you lose a lot of realism in renders, is things like wheels, where that's why the eyes drawn to the wheels. Uh, right, glass. So this is the battery charging light. Uh, we could make that red, couldn't we? Because it does light up red. Uh, might not. Uh, so we're doing a side shot anyway, so we're probably not even going to see that, so that doesn't matter. And I think, apart from the interior, that's the exterior done. So there's not much to do inside. There's the uh, cockpit which there's a texture for. I mean, I could just apply it. It doesn't really matter what the texture is on the inside. Let's just go to plastic. So I want to... Almost like a rough... Hard textured plastic black. Yeah, let's just crank that into there. Right, seatbelt, there's a texture for that. So we're going to go with... That, because it's... Got stickers and labels. Where is it? Seatbelt, 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 seatbelt. There we are. Seat... Oh. Oh, god damn it. Right, a seatbelt onto the diffuse, and then this will need to be a UV as well. There we go. That's satisfying when that happens. Uh, and then for the material type, let's just go with plastic. I mean, I suppose it is cloth, but there isn't anything there. Yeah, I'm not doing a close-up on the seatbelts either, so I'm not too fussed about those. Right, these metal bits here, are these a separate material? Black. They should be black, should they? Uh, okay, so let's go for metal black, metal polish black. Let's crack that into that. And then what's this here? I assume that's chrome, total chrome. So we will go into chrome polished, drop that into there. None of this actually really matters because this won't be visible. Right, the steering wheel, it looks like there's objects in the way that the game would need uh, Windows LCD. Hmm. Let's grab the main wheel and we'll put the texture on that and see what we're left with. So I think we've got a Photoshop image for the steering wheel. If this works, I will be surprised, but we'll see what happens. Right, tiled UV. I don't know if that's worked. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting to see. Uh, UV. Mm, that's not worked. So maybe it is a tiled UV. Uh, yeah, there could be stuff under there, so I need to... What's this dial thing here? Let me just paint. So it pops out. Right, what's this? I don't I don't care what it is. I'm getting rid of it. I don't need it. Come on, delete. Click, delete. Why are, we, why are you not deleting? Delete. Ah, oh, it's all part of this. Oh, it's all part of the wheel. That's annoying. Why is that like that? Ah, oh, right. Okay, so... The 3D Studio Max export has failed on the wheel. Yeah, that looks upside down. These handles should be at the bottom. Uh, there should be dials and knobs on the wheel, and Max hasn't exported it out. 
Never mind. Never mind. It's not important. We're doing a side on view anyway. We'll put the LCD on and then leave it at that. So the LCD will be in textures. Where is it? LCD. Unless it's under window. Uh, where is the, where's the bloody LCD? Uh, I did convert it. I remember doing it. Right, if I can't find it, I'm just going to skip past it. Unless it's in the Hamilton. Okay, maybe I've deleted the LCD and not left it in the folder. Because I deleted out all the DDS files, so there wasn't too much in there. And I might have deleted out the LCD screen. I think I have. Not to worry. I don't need it. Let's just get rid of it. Uh, get rid of that. We'll just leave the black steering wheel in. All of this uh, scene graph. Why is the outlines not showing? That's really annoying. Clicking on that. And I'm, oh, now it's got one. So I need to get rid of all these LCD, these LED. Get rid of all of them. And that there. Base LEDs. Get shot of them. Actually, hang on. Just looking at that wheel. Isn't that looks backwards because those are the fly ah, god damn it right it's bloody backwards is what's happening to it right so i need to uh which node is this is it that one or that one i will remember that one so what i need to do is rotate it around the red that's x so 180 oh you beauty mate you beauty right so i need to uh, move it Maybe just a bit of... Of course, I've deleted the bloody LCD screen now, haven't I? Let's move in the back end of it. Right, but there, yeah, the screen's gone, but I don't care. Right, that'll do. <laughs> Got this little thing poking out to it. Whatever, mate, whatever. Is the bump map on, though? Did I leave the bump map on? Where's the... Uh, material graph? Why is that not pumping up? Oh, no, I've got the bump map on. So we'll bring the... Uh, I'll drag it in. Oh, I've shut the bloody window down again. Rah! Uh, Mercedes texture wheel bump. That's the one there. Uh, yeah, underscore B. So I'm gonna drop that in, and then uh, convert it into a normal app. I, I I know this is not very exciting. It's just me going on now. I'm dropping a new engine, and now I'm dropping it. But there's uh, it's not a setup. It's, it's not so it is kind of exciting for me. I really, really enjoy doing this, and the idea is that whoever's watching this, you might go, "This looks really, this looks really fun." And uh, if you do want to get models, I mean, obviously ACFL, I'm, I'm going to hand out the model willy nilly. They're doing it because it's now shown on my channel, so they, you now know that their car exists. And if you play a set of course, so you might go and buy their mod. It's uh, it's part of the deal. But um, there's websites all over which give out free car models which are equally as as impressively looking as this one and you can do this on those models so uh yeah if you think this looks fun then you can do it yourself uh how fun it is watching me do it i don't know i don't know i would imagine most people are just skipping through it I, i'm not i shouldn't be too concerned about it being entertaining in the middle because most people will just skip through it uh to bits that look like they uh the, you know they look fascinating and, and clever uh, i don't know what these are these don't have textures what is this? A let's. Now I know there isn't a texture for that. A let's. No. Antenna. Where does this antenna go? Right, the brake discs. Don't care about those. They're out of view. Uh, they've got brake discs, have they? They're inside drums, I think. Uh, they're not even visible. Right, the cockpit. Uh, what's this got on it? That's just that's just shadows, isn't it? The key shot sorts the shadows out. Right, underscore S. Shadow details, don't need those. Details, the rivets and stuff. Don't know where they go. I don't think we've got a... Have we got a details? No, I don't know where they go either. Uh, not too fussed. Right, uh, these things here, I might just make them carbon fibre. Problem is, I, oh, I did have a carbon fibre texture and I deleted it. Error. Uh, right, so I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I'm just going to use the... Keyshot Carbon Fiber one for the side gills. I know I've said it will probably look a little bit mismatched, but I'll have to, uh, I'll just have to run with it. Uh, I'll extend more. It doesn't have any carbon fiber. That does not look like carbon fiber, does it? 
It's a very unusual weave. It's like a checkered weave rather than a cross pattern weave. Can I change that? Uh, oh my god. <laughs> is, this, is this necessary? Uh, right. How do I choose uh, color variation? Fibers too? I don't know. So, I don't know. Are these little lines in here supposed to be the weave? Is this main line here the weave? I don't know. Grain one. Nope, that's not done out either. Is that that doesn't look like that? I don't know where I'm going wrong here with this pattern. Fibers two color variation weave distortion. This is all synced, isn't it? Yes, right. Uh, do you know what? Just just leave it. Let's just leave it. It's dark. It's going to be a dark scene. <laughs> There's becoming quite a the theme. That ah, it'll be fine. Right, I think we're done, mate. I think we're done with the texture, so I'm going to save this because I haven't saved it in a while. And then what I'm going to do, I need a plinth. Now, I could do one in key shot, but I just happen to have this open in the background. So let's uh, model this up. Right, units, though. Units. Uh, mm, I think I need to model this as if it was in meters. So the car is what, five and a half meters long. I think 5.5 so I need to make the plinth probably about seven meters in diameter so let's get cracking with that so let's do that seven yes I know it's millimeters but it's going to import as in if it's I'm hoping anyway if it's uh, as if it was meters Wait, let's bring him down that way by uh, 0.3 Yes, right, and then it's very difficult modeling in meters when the units say millimeters. It's very off putting. It's first world problems, I know, but right, 0 0.5, and then this could be like the bottom of the plinth, and we'll do that by 0 0.1. Something like that. Mm, yeah, that'll do. And uh, the plinth on the Williams thingy has got like these kind of grooves in them indentations like wedges so we're gonna go uh, project that and then let's just rectangle that and then right am I doing this the right way uh, no I'm not I'm not doing this the right way I'm gonna uh, delete that and then yeah because the the Williams one I oh, know I shouldn't really I don't need to copy this one too much but it's got a it's got a indentation around there on the lip. So back into here. Uh right, let's just offset this by zero point zero eight. And then zero point zero eight. Cut that down like that. That's better. Right. How this is going to come out, I do not know. But I need to project that and then constrain that to that and then that to that. And then. Ah. It was the midpoint I wanted to get out to that. So it's bang in line. There we go. Right. Width, north point, uh, no point one. Yes, and yes, I know. I was in no point not eight. I did another one. I'm just, I li literally, obviously, making this up as I go along. So I don't know really what it is I'm doing. This is not anything in particular. I'm not going off any blueprints or guides or anything. Right then, rectangular, circular pattern. That around the Z times six, and there, sir, we have ourselves. A plinth, right? We need to fill it. Oh, what the hell is the radius going to be? No uh, point, no eight. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll do that one. Then can I put that one in there? That might look a bit weird. Does it matter? I don't think so. I'll do. Right. That's a plinth, right? Let's export that to the desktop as a as a what step? I'm not exporting any 
textures or anything so that's with plinth so back out a key shot import the plinth off the desktop where is it there it is uh, up orientation well if it doesn't come in right we can just oh, whoa <laughs> uh, right that's coming really small isn't it so I need to scale this up by a lot <laughs> yeah it's my head's hurting thousand let's see what that's ended up like yeah right and then I need to rotate it around the X by negative 90 and then oh, yeah look at that man look at that woo right uh, is this is the car in the center or is the plinth in the center I don't know I don't know um, Let's move the plinth. Move that to roughly there. Yes. Yes. And the car sit on top of the plinth as well. That's handy. Right. Let's put a material on the plinth. Let's go for metal. I don't know which one I'm going to go for though. Uh chrome br no, it's like a it's a weird kind of matte satin kind of chrome isn't it it's like a is there a satin nope awesome uh steel stainless steel brushed it's not really brushed it's sort of a rough radial brushed oh god no uh rough uh, i think this was uh, this this kills your render <sighs> I need the I need the bloody rendering network rendering thingy because uh, anything that's like stainless steel with indentations like this it takes so many passes to get rid of any speckles that are going on in here. Anyway, right, that's looking tickety boo. Uh, I could probably should have probably made the bottom of the plinth a bit bigger, just so there's no clipping like here when I'm when we do a zoom in. Uh, but I can change the camera so that the perspective is a little less, maybe something like that. Uh, yeah, am I gonna? When I do the render, I'm gonna have to shut down these windows so I can make this the, the actual graphics window a little bit bigger. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're still in performance mode as well. Oh my goodness me! I literally just had a flutter. Oh yes, how good does that look? How awesome does that look? Get in right. So the reflections. I'm happy with those. Or should I make them a bit more pronounced? What's uh, Williams doing? Yeah, they're a bit more pronounced on this. So I think we need to change the refractive index. Uh, if I can, roughness. Four point one. A bit much. No point not three. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Well happy with that. Right, so that's metal. Where's it getting its uh, metal type from? I thought there was a property called like chromium and titanium and zinc. Never mind. I don't care. Right, so now we need some backgroundage. And I'm in two minds as to whether to model a physical background or whether to just use an image based lighting effect. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we'll try, we'll start with a picture. So, for the environment, currently using this as a background picture, which is no good. So I'm going to jump into my HDR library, which I've got a huge selection of HDR pictures, which Windows refuses to thumbnail and, uh, and keep the thumbnails on. Is Keyshot going to give me a preview of them though? No? So these, most of these are from a website called HDRI Haven, credit where credit's due. I'll show you the website. It's an absolutely top-notch, high-quality, just a minefield of delightful HDRI backgrounds and textures. Uh, the guy who runs this, he was charging, and then I think he just ended up you know, trying to restore his faith in humanity in, in the hope that people will give him donations, which they are, which is good. And this is my way of uh, paying him back. Here, mate, there's some credit for you. You can uh, go and get these pictures off here and donate to him if you use them. But some of these uh, these scenes are absolutely incredible. 16K 
resolution some of these are in fact most of them have a 16k resolution so i've downloaded a lot of these same goes for the textures he's got an absolutely magnificent array of textures for you to use for grounds walls whatever and these are that good you know you can download the entire map up to 8k resolution for these textures how he's done them i have no idea but credit where credits do make uh, they're phenomenal. So check out HDRI Haven. That's where I got the most of these from. So I need a, I need either a studio background or a garage background. So I've got garage 8K and a garage 16K. But problem is Windows is trolling the hell out of me. So I don't know what they look like. I want it to be as dark as possible. Uh, and I think the garage might not be that dark. But we'll see what happens. Drop the garage background in. Yeah, it's not very dark, is it? Uh, it's a bit of an orange hue to it, and the background's way too big, so that's coming at, what, 75 metres? Uh, so if we drop that down to maybe 25. Okay, still too big, 15. Still too big. Uh, 10. Getting there. Getting there, but now you can see the background. Inter oh, now my CPU's really starting to struggle. Yeah, you can see now the background starting to interact with the model. So I need it to be darker, and I don't want it to have as much of a brown hue to it. So I think there's one called Skylit Garage in here somewhere. Why is Windows not put them in all alphabetically? Why is it not alphabetical? Someone tell me why this is not al al not the why. Uh, <laughs> as if I, I didn't do that. I did not change that setting. He says, right, uh, so Skylit Garage... Skylit entrance garage. There we go. Right. So this one should be a darker. Uh, still not very. Uh, I mean, let's jump back over to the Williams picture. Nah, nah. I may have to improvise here. I may have to improvise here. Well, hmm. Hmm. I mean, that doesn't look terrible. It looks terrible on the plinth with the garage, but in terms of the lighting on the car, it doesn't look terrible. I'm going to get rid of that. Give us a bit more space to work with here. Uh, can I change the image background, please? Okay, that's not really very good. Why is that? That's 1280 by 1024. Oh, my God. All right, let's bring this back up. In the shot. Alright, so yeah, 1080p is just going to troll the hell out of me, so there's nothing I can do with that. Right, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. So the wheels, um, hmm, not overly chuffed with the wheels. That looks a bit too anodized for my like, and that should be like a really bright turquoise, kind of like these. But what can you do? What can you do? Right, let's um, let's experiment with a cylindrical background rather than have the lighting effect. So let's. How do I do this? So add a add geometry cylinder. So let's drop that in the middle. Uh, I need to make this canny big. So can I just go to the object properties? Where's the object properties gone? Seems on there, right? Scale. This needs to be a lot bigger, doesn't it? Whoa! How much bigger is that? Yes, yeah, way too big. Ten times two? No. Twenty. Fifteen. Right, that should be okay. As long as it's surrounding the car. Right. So I think now what I need to do is edit the geometry. Where's edit geometry? Why is edit geometry not on it? Now it is. Okay. <laughs> Key shot is really funny like that sometimes. Right. Nerves and triangles. Okay. So I want to separate objects. No, I want to split object surfaces. That. Okay. So let's split it into three. So that should be the middle bit, top and bottom. So what I want to do is delete the bottom bit. bit there and 
and zoom in. So it should be dark inside here. Right, that's good. And he says, can't see a damn thing. Performance mode, that should turn some lights on, right. So with ray tracing on, there's basically no lights inside of here, which is good. There's no scene light getting into the uh, into the cylinder, so that's I think what I'm going to go for. I need to make this cylinder a bit bigger though, which I might, might be a bit difficult given as I've just exploded it. Uh, can I just do that and then scale that up? Oh, sweet! Right, so I need to make the background a bit bigger. Scene. Uh, where was the scene size? Ah, that one there. Right, so the scene size, let's put it up at 20. Okay. I probably don't need the scene anymore. I think now that I'm using this cylinder, I'm superseding the need for the scene. And we're going to use a studio lighting to uh, light up the car. Uh, I'm still not happy with the bloody image size. I want the image to be a bit wider. How do I do this? Right, width. Can I just make this? I'm going to make that 1200. That's annoying, I'm not going to lie. Oh. It's annoying how... Oh, that bloody key shot has minimised itself again. Why is it doing that? Change that to 1300. Why is it changing the size of the application when I change the size of the image? Just change the viewport. That's all I want you to do. Let's bring this back up. Right, uh, I can probably make that a bit what Why has it gone back to 11? Oh my god. Do I need to make this custom or something? Edit custom. Oh, d come on, key shot. It do this does not need to be this awkward. Uh, 1300. Height, 8, Wow. Uh, right, I'll just persevere with that. Right. right, one more zoom of the middle wheel, and that takes me outside of the cylinder. Uh, I can change the field of view on the camera, couldn't I? Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Right, I think that's the that's the angle I'm gonna go for. That's almost on that. That lower wheel there kind of needs to come down a bit. But I think that's the perspective I'm going for. Yeah, so I think we've got the camera perspective just about right. This needs to be about there. Get the wing mirrors lined up. So, oh, damn you! Mm, okay, I might need to make the cylinder a bit bigger. But there we go. We've got the wing mirrors lined up, wheels lined up. That's the money shot perspective. Maybe just ah oh, man. Not gonna lie, that's annoying. But it's on me. I just need to make the cylinder a bit bigger. I right, just bring that down to so the plinth. Is not showing the bottom of the screen. I appreciate this isn't very exciting, but this is part of the joys of rendering. This is fun for me. It might not be fun to watch, but this is fun for me just playing around and getting it perfect. I've spent hours until like three, four o'clock in the morning playing with this stuff, just getting it right. It's just tiny little minuscule tweaks. So I mean, it's just to be black. Yes, it's still black. Okay. And uh, I think I'm going to save this camera. So this is going to be the, let's call this plinth cam, and we'll lock that, just so if we do orbit off, we can always jump back to plinth cam. Uh, because I need to put some, I need to put a texture on the cylinder, so we've got at least something. I, I can't get exactly that. I could have done if I'd modelled it in Inventor and done like an extruded or an emboss or something, but I don't need it to look exactly like that. Uh, but I do need to put a texture on the cylinder, so let's uh, click our cylinder 
and uh, we'll go for plastic and then for it ooh, that looks weirdly satisfying those where are those lights coming from we're in an enclosed space I don't know where those lights are coming from. There should be a lid on this cylinder as well. Uh, never mind. Right, let's uh, go to the texture pack because uh, the free HDRI Havens texture pack. So I want a texture map. And then I want a diffuse from the texture pack. So I've downloaded a lot of these uh, textures and split them off into little categories like this. So he's, he gives you the diffuse map, the normal map, Bump map, roughness, specular, uh, and then Windows is just trolling the hell out of me again. They're not giving me thumbnails. Oh, Windows 10, man. They're just JPEGs. What's your beef? Honestly, don't know what your beef is. Anyway, right, what do I want on the wall? White bricks might look nice, even though the wall's black on the Williams photo. That might be a nice effect. I do like a bit of rustic industrial brickwork. What's floor bricks look like? Oh, my windows is trolling the hell out of me with these thumbnails. No, I don't like that. It's too flat. Uh, right, we'll go with white bricks and we'll see. It's going to be dark anyway, so we might get a nice effect as long as I get the bump mapping right on the white bricks. I might be a bit brave going with the 8K texture, but it'll be crisp, if anything else. Right, what's that looking like? Tad bit on the big side, so we've got a 20 meter texture. These are 8K textures, so I don't know what the actual size of the textures are or should be. But uh, if we drop that down to 5 meters, now that's possibly still a bit too big. That I'm down with. That is tickling my pickle. I do like that, even without the bump map and in performance mode with no lights. That is tickling my pickle. So. What I need to do now is bring in the uh, the rest of the speculars and bump maps and whatnot. So I need to bring in a texture map. And yes, Windows. What? Wind? What? I mean, really? Where's the logic? Where is the logic in the thumbnail generation that's going on right here? So bump. Do I, do I want to use bump or normal? I want to stick with normal map. Uh, white bricks. Stick that in the bump, and then make that a normal map. You can see the the little reflective specular highlights appearing on the bumps. I do like that. Right. Now, you you are not human. If that just didn't just tickle your pickle, then you're not human. <laughs> that was nice. That was good. Right. Let's just sort of go somewhere in the middle so it's not a bit over the over the top. Normal map. Yada yada yada. Everything's linked. Sweet. Right. And then let's go for. I don't know what the rest of these do, if I'm honest. Uh, like specular, do I need? Do I even need specular? I don't know. Like for example, I don't need the shadows because key shot, the AO ambient occlusion. I don't need that because key shot should be generating that for me if I shine a spotlight onto the wall. So I shouldn't need that. I don't even think key shot will accept it. But specular, key shot's got specular. And specular roughness in some of in some of the other textures. What the difference is, couldn't tell you, mate. No idea. Uh, but I think I'm just going to drop it in and just say, there you go. Just do with it. I've put it on roughness. I'm not specular. Right. That now looks worse. Why does that look worse? What's just happened to make that look worse? I don't know. That looks good. That doesn't look good. I'm inclined to leave that off. And uh, what else can I pick? Uh, right, let's just grab this. So we've got ah, roughness, right? So I can use I can use a roughness. I don't, I don't know what roughness does. Not a clue. Like, what's the difference between roughness and bump? These are the things that make me an amateur at the moment because I, I don't know enough about all of these different. Uh, terms and uh, spout and specular. Yeah, I don't know what the roughness pattern does, if I'm honest. So uh, I'll just drop it in, and it 
Oh, actually, that does look a little bit more 3D now, doesn't it? Is it a normal map? It's not a normal map. Bump height 3. But why, is, why have we got roughness and bump? I don't know. I'm now starting to lose perspective on what looks best and what doesn't. It still kind of looks 3D, so I'm happy with that. Right, uh, back to uh, this. This is it's plastic. It isn't plastic, is it? It's brick. So what can I set this as? Advanced. Mm. Paint. Mm. I don't know. There's no masonry or anything like that, is there? Velvet. Emissive. Nope. It's gem measured metallic paint. Cloudy. I don't know what you want from me. It's none of those. It's masonry. Nonetheless, nonetheless, this should still be uh, blacked out, right? Because we've got no light. So with ray tracing, when we uh, disable performance mode and ray tracing is enabled, it looks at all the light sources in the scene and then it calculates uh, where light bounces off certain objects. And because we don't have any light, there's there's nothing there. So I need to save this before I go any further. And this, for me, is where the fun begins. It, again, it's very strange for me to be excited by all this stuff, but I am. Right, what's my lighting set as performance mode? Right, I'm going to keep it as that, because obviously with, uh, with that disabled, I can't see a damn thing. So I need to make some lights. Right, as per the Williams scene, guessing what they've got, I can see reflections here of what look like big, huge, diffused studio lights. There might be sort of a row of three or four of them there and possibly down here as well shining light down to there and then down to there and uh, we can see I've got like highlights across here which means there might be like a light on the roof like a straight strip of LEDs something like that which are causing these here possibly uh, looking at it from different angles they've also got LED what look like bar lamps on the walls here which I can't see here maybe the cars masking them uh, I could make those, but they're on the back end of the model, so I don't know what they're going to add. I'm not interested in casting light on the back of it, unless it really is going to... Oh, that's a better picture. Right, so we can see the plinth there. So it comes off. It's a bit higher than mine. doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, they've got multiple light sources. I'm going to struggle to get it exactly the same, but as long as it looks roughly like this, I kind of know what the look I'm going for. I need the top of the car to be accentuated, the curves to be accentuated and highlighted and uh, need the rims like the Pirelli design on the side tire walls to be lit up and that's really about it Just checking out the reflections here to see if I can spot anything else so you can see these lights here are sort of casting down onto the wall here which I'm not going to see in my image uh, that's that is looking like a photograph isn't it you can see the can't see the bump on the tire so I'm not too fussed that I was missing that in my model what's this here I've seen that one nothing new there but a bit of engraving in the plinth I'm not too fussed about that could have done that in inventor but still if it's right let's get cracking with some light so what I think I'll do is I'll start with just making a, a bit of a skylight here as if there's like a hanging light over the car and see what that starts us with so back into free cam and we'll create a plane and this is a key, it's not key shot strength if I'm honest making geometry it's a little bit frustrating especially grabbing scale bars and having to change the uh, the UCS because I want to scale this sort of just make you know, narrow it down but the scale that's the red one I want to grab it can either go really slow like that or it'll just shoot way off into the distance uh, based off uh, I think it's the size of the scene and the type of uh, the mode of the UCS that you're pulling but it's behaving for now and that's all that matters right so this is going to we're going to replicate like a sort of thin hanging lamp maybe about so big and then about the length of the car pull it just so oh great Great. Oh, I'm zooming out there. Right. I maybe can make it a bit wider. Something like that. Right. So we'll start with that. We'll 
Oh, well, we'll add a, add a light onto the, Get ahead of it, man. And then we'll add a light onto that and let's see how that comes out like. It might be a little bit too close. But this should start lighting up uh, the, the car. Give us a nice highlight across the top based off of the strength of the light that we'll go for. And this is going to absolutely kill my screen recording software. There is a good chance already that my voice is way out of sync to what's actually going on on screen. Uh, I've got no way of knowing that at this point, so I apologise if that's happened. If it's absolutely terrible, then this video might not, never even reach YouTube if it's that bad. But anyway, right, let's go to materials. So I need to go to... Oh, I need to go back to the... God damn it. Uh, library. Uh, lights. So what do I want? Do I want a, a spotlight or do I want an, an emissive light? Or an area light? I don't know at this point. We can play with them all. Let's start with an emissive white light. Drag that under there. Right. And I'll increase the intensity of this to maybe five. Don't want it to be visible in reflection. I do want to be not to the camera. Uh, not visible in shadows. And let's see what happens with the ray tracing. Okay, that looks terrible. Uh, that's absolutely awful. I might need to increase the uh, the multiplier on it. Yeah, I think an emissive light's more for like sort of local lights inside of headlamps and whatnot. Although it is giving us a nice tone across the top, which I could use just to complement a couple of spotlights. But let's just play around. This is this is now where the fun begins for me. All the texturing and stuff, it's kind of satisfying. But this bit now is where it gets really interesting. Let's crank that up to 10. No, I think all this is going to do is just going to... It's never going to brighten the car up, is it, really? Uh, unless I bring the plane almost down on top of it, which it's not going to be very realistic. Sometimes if we start going crazy with that. Um, I'm happy with that. You know what it is? That, them highlights look really nice. They look really nice. Right, so I think we're going to leave that light hanging there. And then I need to add a few, a few more scene lights. Uh, maybe around here. I might need to make this cylinder a little bit bigger because I keep on uh, I keep on clipping the car, so I need to uh, maybe make the. It's, I guess the cylinder's the room, isn't it? So I need to make the room a little bit bigger. So we scale that up to twenty. Let's make that thirty. That should be more than enough. I can probably get rid of the environment background as well because that's just not going to get used in outdoor scenes and in, I guess most scenes you'd use this as the lighting for the car so it, it looks key shot looks at the, the highlights and where the, the exposure points are on the image and it brightens the scene up and lights the car from the image but we're not using that so we can get a shot of those and uh I can bring the cylinder down so it's not so tall. Uh, I need the move tool. Right, so there's the car, so I can maybe make it sort of so high. Like that. Then, I can add a ground plane. I'll accept that. Add a ground plane and then clip the cylinder below the ground plane. Rather than mess about with the... Uh, what in the hell's going on there? Ah, okay. Am I bothered? See, I don't. In Keyshot, I don't know if you can trim. Like my natural CAD mind is saying, I need to trim the cylinder back to the plane, but I don't know if we can do that in Keyshot. Can I scale the cylinder? Maybe. It's just I don't like this bit hanging down. It looks. I would never see it, but it, I know it's there and it's doing me adding. Uh, cylinder, that one there. Move tool so I can scale this, so I like that. And then move this sort of there. If it's hanging just by that much, that's fine. Okay. That's a bit better, right? So the back, mm, background is quite far off, isn't it? Right, the ground plane. Do I need the ground plane? Hmm. 
the ground plane is being a bit of a nuisance. It's in line with the top of the plinth. So does that mean I need to move the plinth and the Mercedes? I probably do. Uh, if I do that, what's what's the ground gonna be? There's no background. Okay, let's move these two up. To about there. Right, and also we've got a we've got the roof of the cylinder here, which we need to sort out as well. So uh, edit the material graph on that. I keep I keep feeling the need to apologise, mate. It's like this is not very. It's not very gripping, is it? To, there's no big massive explosion at the end. And be like, and here we go. And, oh, no, it's it's just a slow. It's a slow burner, is this rendering process? But uh, if you're still watching, thanks. <laughs> Obviously, there's uh, there's no pressure to watch this. It's it's just someone dicking about with a bit of rendering. Right. So we're gonna call this the. Why can't why am I struggling to remember how to spell ceiling? The ceiling, and texture. Hmm. Let's go with paint. And I'm going to use a just a bump. Should I just use a bump? I don't want to. It's going to be dark, so we might catch some reflections on the ceiling off of some of the ground lights, but we're not going to be shining a light on the ceiling. So I don't need a full diffused texture. So let's go with just a bump. And then let's go into a texture pack. Windows, honestly. Why for you do this to me? Let's just go with great plaster and drop that on the bump. And probs need to drop scale down a bit. Maybe a bit more. That'll do. It's not a normal map, is it? I should have probably used the normal map. Does it matter? Probably not. Right, colour. Uh, I, I think I want it white. I think I want the colour to be white. How do I do that? Just change this one. Well, where's the bump gone? Why is that gotten rid of my bump? Maybe it's because performance mode's on. I oh, can see the spec. Yeah, okay. Alright, yo. So, do you know what? Just that on its own. Even though you can't see the car, that's nice. <laughs> I do like it. It's it's just... It, it's just... I don't know what it is. This just... I love it. <sighs> right, let's put this back on. Let's add some more lights. How am I going to do the lights? Am I going to create spherical objects which act as spotlights am I gonna do bar lights around the sun that might look nice you know I don't know if Keyshot can do that what I'm thinking is like a circular if this was 3d card I would draw like a cylinder on the edge of the like a, a cylindrical rod up here and then pattern it around the middle of this uh, this bigger cylinder but uh, Keyshot's not really a CAD package so I don't know if I can do that but, uh, oh god, the roof's, the ceiling's quite low. Which way is zoom? Right, that way. Uh, right, edit. You can see I'm a complete amateur with this. It does it show. <laughs> right. Let's scale this down in all angles. Come on, you can do it. You. Oh, damn it. God, here we You hit the wrong bloody axis. Edges would be nice as well, so you can see what the orientation of the uh, cylinder is. Right, maybe a bit thinner, something like that, and then make it a bit longer, something like that. There's no like diameter value, is there, for the the cylinder? I don't understand how Keyshot calculates the size of objects. It's a bit of a mystery to me. But uh, it is what it is, right? What what light am I going to make these though? Like they they're, they're supposed to be like these here, but I, I, that's just a missive, isn't it? I think that's just a missive. It's not a spotlight. It could be an area light. Well, we'll we'll turn it on and we'll see what happens. So I need to make this. What? Uh, where's it gone? Why is it gone over there? This is what I was saying before about Keyshot and it. You saw my mouse move there. What's it doing? <laughs> Where's it going? Why is it jumping away so fast? Do I need to change this to local or something? Like why? I don't get that. That's. It's not Keyshot's strength. 
object manipulation let's just say that it can be forgiven because it's got many many strengths elsewhere right do i need to put these against the edge of the wall if i put these against the edge of the wall i've made the cylinder that big now that it, it might just vanish off maybe i should make the cylinder a bit it's just annoying. Or maybe I can change the perspective of the camera. It's just, the smaller the cylinder is, then it's more difficult to see the car. Alright, uh, right, let's give it a shot. Yeah, I don't want the walls to be that far away from the car. You can see that room there doesn't look as big. That's actually a square room, isn't it? It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It would have. It would have looked. That car there would have looked just as good if it was in a cylindrical room. So. Where's the uh, the scale of my main cylinder? 30, it's that one there, isn't it? So if I change this back down, it's a 20. Ah, oh, god damn it. So I need to move it up again. About there. So what I'm thinking is once I'm in, if I change the perspective of the camera, it might give me a bit more leverage yeah that's better so i can now i can look around here it doesn't look as pretty like this but as long as i can get the objects where i want them to be i'm fine with that okay another thing i don't know how to do in keyshot is like in 3d card packages you've got like a view cube at the top so you can just look orthographically side on to an object so looking right down the x axis i haven't figured that out yet whether that can be done or not i don't know it's just one of those things where I haven't quite figured it out. No, that's perspective. You'd think it would be under view, wouldn't you, if it was anywhere? And it's not. So, uh, our camera. Free camera. That's just the cameras I've made. St ah, ah, right. Well, what's front? Brilliant. <laughs> it's uh, not what I was expecting. Is that locked? No, okay. So, that's not really a lot of use to me. Not a lot of use to me, mate. Right. I need to get this. See, if I put this on the wall of the, the cylinder, it's never going to be central. How do I get this right on the x-axis? It's translational. Uh, it's the Z, isn't it? It's, it's off on the Z. Oh, come on. I cancelled that. Control Z. Right. So, why is that now back to zero? Oh, this is so frustrating. It really is. That's not zero on the Z. Oh, my God. I don't understand. I'll, okay, okay, right. Let's just manually move it. Globally. Why, why can't I move it? Just I want to move it up that way there. Oh my! I'm I am now getting frustrated. This is the point where I I start to get quite frustrated. When you start like left click to to orbit the camera, but it grabs one of these axes, and uh, obviously that's not what you were going for because you didn't click the goddamn axes, did you? No, I didn't. So, this is going to be very difficult with this perspective on the camera. Very difficult. There is probably this is this is one of those instances where I need someone to say, "Mate, there was a much better way of doing what you were trying to do. Put that against the wall and pattern it around. There was a better way of doing that bit." That's uh, an occasion where I need someone to be like, "You should have done this, that, the other." Anyway, right. So that's there against the wall. So if I I need to pattern this, but first, but first, I need to just check what kind of light we're going to go with. So if I put an emissive white onto that and then turn off that, what happens? No, that looks absolutely terrible. Yeah, I need to go for the kind of lighten up the, the wall around it sort of effect. So I think that's going to be an area light, isn't it? Yeah, you can see the start of the effect I'm trying to go for. So I maybe need to, do I need, to, yeah, I need to leave it turned on. So I need it to be visible in the camera. Might just need to increase the power of the light. It's 
not as powerful as I was hoping it would be. It might be fine once I get it rotated though. That's nowhere near the wall. Why that I could have swore that was right bang on the wall. Clearly not. That'll be why it's not lighting the wall up then, Neil. Oh, come on. Why is it so jumpy? Tiny movement of the mouse and it's like shoots off to Japan. So, that's better. There we go. Oh, that is nice. That is nice. So I might have the power a little bit too high up though. Oh, no. Maybe not though. Maybe not. Oh, come on. Zoom out. Oh, that's nice. How do I pattern this? <laughs> How do I get this to pattern? Uh, right. Let's, uh, before I pattern it, I can link the materials, can't I? If I pattern. I'm just thinking if I need to adjust the light and I make maybe 10 of these, I don't want to adjust the setting 10 times, so... bit too bright right let's crack off uh, performance mode and see if we can get this patterns right so edit uh, just how do I do that? Uh, uh, I've seen patterns somewhere pattern 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 come on it's got to be here somewhere duplicate part I want to duplicate the part I want to pattern it why can't I just pattern it Make, but why, why is make pattern there, but not there? That doesn't make any sense. Key shot. That's not. That's not intuitive at all. Right. I want a circular pattern. And uh, where's the logic here? The radius. Oh my god. Center. Center. I don't understand what's happening right now. Why is it just camera an option? What's that? What's that doing? My wall looks nice, but I don't know what that's. Why? Is, oh my god! Count. I want to go for ten. Not quite what I was going for. How do I pick the center? What's happening? Ah, right. I see. Right. So I need to put in the radius of the cylinder, which is a mystery. Because it doesn't feed that back to me, does it? Uh, can I guess? Uh, radius 0 0.5? Is it going to dynamically update? It is. So I need to keep doing this until it hits the wall. Uh, well, obviously it's one come on update well what I don't understand what's happening where's that gone key shot please what's happening oh right That might be the ticket. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh my god. Get in. Yes. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Right. So, that looks nice, man. That looks so nice. So, that's the wall lighting done. It's not. It's it's kind of lit the car up a little bit, but I need some extra spotlights and studio lights around uh, and in front of the car. How am I going to do that? I wonder. Or should I do it with a plane or objects? Physical solid primitives. I don't know. I, I don't. This is the thing. I don't know which of these is better for spotlights. Or if it even matters. Or if I even want a spotlight. Do I want a spotlight? I think I do. I guess just start with the sphere. So I'll drop it about here. Does the size of the object increase the intensity of the light? 
don't know. Don't know. Does it convert the object once you assign it to a spotlight? I don't know. We'll soon find out. So I so these are all the light profiles that Key Shots brings to the party. What the difference is between all of these, I don't know. That's assume a ninety degree shine of light, like the whatever it's called, the, the cone of light. That's forty five. Um Let's see what the, uh, the Williams photo's got. It's not really, it's not really eating anything you can see there, is it? Uh, I don't think these are spotlights. These are probably area lights. So I don't know what to do with that. Well, try and error. What's this? 120. Let's whack that on. And then turn off performance mode. Right. Where's that shining? So that's, I think that's just... That's just going straight down over, isn't it? So I need to move... Not performance mode. I need to move... And then rotate. So, ah, there we go. Starting to light the car up. Possibly a bit too wide. Uh, don't know if this is the effect I'm going for. I'm not wanting this huge, just massive patch of light on the floor. I want it to be more targeted. But I'm not sure where key shots. It, it, it's it, unless it's all in the light profile. But in the likes of red, you can control, you know, how far out this radius is and how directed it is onto the objects. And it seems to be a lot more control in the likes of red. Is, than there is in key shot. So let's let me drag that there, and then just lift it up slightly. Is that doing anything? What's that doing? What which angle is that rotating around? I don't know where that's going. Right. Possibly need to make this a bit brighter. So I think that's this setting. Hmm, this is not really going the way I was hoping it would go. I don't want to bring this too close to the car, else it'll look unrealistic. Let's see what it looks like with an area light instead. This one here. Hmm. What's this about? Why? Why is the X, Y, and Z all over the place? It's very odd. Local and global. It's very unusual concept. It's just, it, it's probably not. It's very logical and just, I'm in one of those moods when you get to this point and stuff just, you, you know in your head what you're going for and when it's not playing ball with you, pun intended, you just start to get a bit frustrated because uh, you know what you want to do but it's just not having it. Let me crank the power of this up. It's not really done much, has it? So, I don't know what kind of light this is I'm going for. So, it's not... An area light's not really helping me out. Spotlight isn't helping me out. What about point light? That's not really done anything either, has it? I don't know where the light's pointing with this. Where is the light pointing? Is that even turning? I don't know what's happening, but where's the Where's the light shining? I don't know what this light's doing. That's an absolute mystery to me what's going on there. So what else have we got? I don't have many lights though really. It's not a lot of lights, key shot that like. Why so limited? Maybe I want to go for something more narrow then. What's this? Spotlight. 15 degrees. 30 degrees. Oh, there was the light there. Coming back around. There it is. Yeah, maybe I just need a row of these or something.
that's nice. I like that. That that looks good. Lighten up the wheel like that. I might keep that there. How do I see the light so I can select it? Show light sources. Right. So that's you. You're good, I think. Might change once I get the perspective all set up and the camera straightened, but... Oh, I need to duplicate this onto the other wheel, but I don't think Keyshot's got a mirror. That would... No, I mean, you can't mirror around planes. We don't even have planes, do we? So we're going to have to uh, duplicate this. And then move it over here. That. But this one, this one here is kind of, God, oh, this is getting quite frustrating now. This one here is kind of coming in at an angle from the sort of front like that. So this one needs to be the same, but from kind of here, that's getting really laggy now, really laggy. I don't know. What more I can do with that though? Like I've got a 8700K and a 1080 Ti. If this is laggy for me, but then again I am on screen recording software at the same time, which is an absolute murderer of the CPU. Just tweaking that. Come on, come on, you can do it. One more. There we go. Ah, just clipping the front of the car, don't want that. There we go, that looks pretty, oh, I just need to see if they're side on. And aligned. Mm, no. I think this one's further out, isn't it? It's not just the perspective of the camera, this one is actually further out. Or is it the perspective of the camera? I don't know. I suppose it is asking a, and expecting a bit much for something like Keyshot to have like alignment tools and it's just you know when you're used to that sort of stuff in 3D CAD when you're trying to align something up you've got constraints and tools for that kind of thing and then you try and do a job in another program that needs those tools and you're like how 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 do I do this now without those tools it's uh, it's a bit of a tricky I think that back wheel is lighting up more than the, the front wheel isn't it. Yeah, so this is getting really frustrating. It's probably more frustrating for you to watch than it is for me to do this. But as I'm like scrolling the middle wheel and panning, it, there's about a second or two delay on it actually responding. So that's why it's quite jumpy. Yeah, I think I need to move that rear spotlight back a bit. Oh, it is really, really laggy. Move this one back. I think we're so close that the uh, the purple on the wheel had turned a bit white. I need to try and keep those two really consistent. I'm not going to see that in performance mode, am I? No, my lights aren't showing. Let me pull this back a bit more. that's okay that's okay so now what do i need i need i need to light up this main body but i've got the highlights kind of sorted out i think what i need is just a like a diffused light so it's not casting hard shadows you can see there's no there's no real hard shadows over here i think my spotlights are a bit too bright but we're going to adjust those afterwards I think it's a bit much to expect myself to be able to replicate that exactly but it's just the it's the aesthetic that I'm going for rather than uh, the exact look so what I'll do now then I've got the cylinders sorted create a new bit of geometry shall I do a plane if I do a plane yeah let's do a plane and uh, see if I can do like a, a full side on light Lighten up the side of the car. Right, performance mode is going to have to come on. This is getting 
way to... Oh, it's done it again. Press the, that key shot. If you're watching, you're probably not, because this is... I don't even know how long this has gone on for now, but when you press the middle wheel, right, to pan the camera, if I press the, the middle wheel within here, don't don't move. Don't move the plane. I don't want to move the plane with the middle wheel. I want to move the camera. Do you know what I mean? I don't expect to be able to move this with the middle wheel. It's just frustrating. Right. Let's drag that across here and then up. So this is going to be kind of like a a big, huge, massive flat panel light. Which might be a bit much. But it's a good starting point. I need to get it completely side on. Like that, and then maybe up a bit. Are we a bit far away? No, no it's just the camera. Right, so let's see what this gives us. Once uh, I convert this into a light. Now what kind of light do I want here? Probably an area light. And then I'm going to have to make that invisible to the camera. Obviously, so we can see through it. Hmm. It's not quite worked out. But that's the other thing. Is it because the plane's flipped, is it casting the light the other way? Or is it just that the light's not powerful enough? Difficult to tell. <sighs> so I'm going to have to go back into here and then rotate it. Ah. No, it's not. I don't know what's happening. Where's the light? Yeah, there's just not a lot of light coming from it, is there? I think it's possibly casting from both sides. It's just not very bright. It's not very bright and it's not very targeted. Even if I moved it, like, right on top of the car, that area light's just not pumping out enough light to light up the car. So that's the wrong type of light. And that was an area diffuse, or a little point diffuse. That's just going straight down, isn't it? What's this setting here do? Ten, two. I don't know what that's doing. Not a clue, mate. Couldn't tell you. Why is that just going down? What's this line here? Why is that just going? What's what's happening? This can't just be me and my incompetence. This is not very intuitive. Like, I granted, once you get it right, the end result is spectacular. But this is not intuitive. Why is there just an orange line coming up from the ground? And why have I only got like two settings here? There's nothing I can edit here. Okay. What else have I got then? Point light IS. Yes. Oh, now we're getting to the realms of the CPU is so hammered. It's taken this long now to actually see the results of stuff happening. Let's uh, increase the multiplier on that. That's starting to look a bit better, isn't it? But yeah, the camera's now so grainy. It's really hard to see what's going on in that picture. I'm wondering if that light, though, is the one I was after. I just need to make a couple more of them. Yeah, performance mode's not going to help me out with that, is it? No. Do I need then to change the lighting? Basic mode, that's not. Why is that taking so long to solve? 
It's so slow. Right. That plane there. Hmm. Just thinking, 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 thinking. Okay. I think I want to see what this is going to come out like as it is with that plane and those lights. Uh, where's the visible the camera settings? Okay, I, I've got I'm my brain power to uh, figure that out. Right, so let's turn off the light sources. The plane's off. Uh, let's get the camera into position. So we'll go to plinth cam. That's not how I remembered plinth cam being, but it doesn't look terrible. Uh, right, I'm going to unlock plinth cam, and I'm going to just sort of move it off the ground to about there. Oh my god! <laughs> Stop! Stop! enough already why is it doing this to me how do I go back to saved plinth cam right zoom in okay move down it's clipping the front and back of the car off but should be able to get the general idea not happy with the ceiling being lit like that maybe i've got the power of these too high up and i pray why is it not letting me pick these i pray i linked the uh, the material on all of these so if i drop my time to say 1200 that's not really helping me it's not really helping me right are these all linked oh why are they not linked oh. you'd think it would link them on a pattern wouldn't you right link so that sh is that now drop them all down to 500 okay I can only see one of those rear lights, though it doesn't really look. Hmm. Maybe should have made more of those lights. Either way, I'm I'm all right without you now. That looks. I just need to give it a bit of time to render, which is not going to happen whilst I'm talking because this is so artificially lit. This could take ages and ages and ages to render. So. I think what I'm going to do is concede that this is the best I'm going to get without spending like several hours rendering it. Uh, I'm going to... Yeah, okay, let's do that. Video's gone on for long enough. I'm, I've had a good time playing around with this. Maybe you've learned some stuff and maybe you're able to tell me some stuff that I can learn from. So what I'm going to do is change the uh, the, the camera settings the lighting settings I'm going to modify this to jewelry add a few more global illumination bounces in here and then I'm going to knock out one last shebang render uh, and then I'll show you that at the end of the video as sort of like a, 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 a just a flash up photo so you can see what it looked like after maybe an hour or two rendering uh, and I might need to change the ceiling as well because that that's not great <laughs> I don't know why the ceiling's so bright I haven't got that much light shining on the ceiling unless it's the that's not it where's the lid of this cylinder it's not that it's that why is the lid of the cylinder so bright refractive index so I'm going to drop that down mm, might be a bit better and uh, I might have to just change its colour so it's a bit darker. Something like that. Okay, I'll I'll do that and then we'll uh we'll let it render for a bit. This yeah, because it's so much artificial light here, it's got so many light bounces to calculate. I might even need to offload this onto one of my other workstations, which has got more cores to uh to get the final picture, but that's the process that I've been through to get my Formula One car rendered, mate. It looks goddamn nice, doesn't it? Look, it did, not right now, but throughout the process, it looked really nice. Anyway, I'll uh, yeah, I'll get this rendered. I'll show up the photo. If you enjoyed this, uh, I, I don't know if you 
would have watched this all the way through the end or if you've just skipped through the end i don't know but uh, i can do more of these i'm going to do one on vred vred and uh, show the process on vred and my thoughts on the two programs and how they compare uh once i get onto that one but uh i'll uh, i'll do that one possibly with a ferrari or should I stick with a Mercedes just so you can get a, an identical comparison between the two? I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Probably stick with a Mercedes. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.